This video was recorded in front of a live virtual audience. Hi everybody, Jacob here. Welcome back to my channel today. I shall be reviewing a niche perfume together with you. Even though it's niche and a lot of people don't kind of go in that direction, I still think this one is very worthy and I rarely fall for niche. But I fell for this one. This is Fleur Burlesque by Wilhelm Parfumerie and of course the bottle is kind of flat. It's huge, round, but very flat. Designed by Pierre Dinan, the same guy who designed the opium bottle as well as the Obsession bottle, but here you can see better the title of the perfume in its wonderful box. And uh, there is a little kind of trick to this design, which took me a while to understand how this pattern works on this box. And if you flip it like this, and then we cover it up here, look at that! All of a sudden, the title of the perfume appears check this out it took me a while to figure it out though so let's say we let's say we go look at this uh and then you go down and then it's mirrored upside down and then again it's and so blah 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 the whole you know the whole pattern it's really gorgeous and they're playing with proportions and stuff uh in terms of how the box is kept um meaning usually they you have the information of the perfume down here. So the box is supposed to stand like this. But if the box stands like this, the name of the perfume, we're usually used to in perfumery having the box stand like this. And then you have the name of the perfume frontal to the potential customer. In this case, no. Uh, what the customer sees is this. You got to look up on top to see the name. So that there's that. And plus, you got to flip it like this if you want to read Fleur Burlesque on this side, so it, it plays with proportions. And then you slide this out, okay? Wait, hold on, let me put it in so you get the whole reveal. The reveal, right? Hold on, you guys. So, you, you slide it open, and then you lift this up, and you have this gorgeous little stand, this little soft velvety white clean white floral type of stand right so we're going to review this perfume now before we get to the review don't forget to thumb up this video if you're liking it thus far and uh, subscribe to my channel here on youtube while you're at it and next to the subscription button you can push the join button become a member today and gain access to extra perks you can also join me on patreon super deco ball spelled together there as well join me on patreon to gain access to extra perks and thank you to all my members and patrons who have already pledged without you the fashion bunker wouldn't be here and this video is being filmed live in front of a virtual audience which means that i have my live co-viewers and watchers as i'm filming with me in the chats who will co-review the perfume together with me if some of you guys in the chats already have this fragrance let me know what you think about it in the chats right now and you guys watching later let me know what you think about this perfume in the comment section down below i'm going to spray it now look how beautiful this container is it's so soft and fluffy i'm living for this yellow this yellow don't forget this yellow this yellow is going to come in handy the yellow and the white is going to come in very handy in just a minute hmm so maybe, hold on. well, okay. Certain statements make absolutely no reason to be written <laughs> while I'm doing this. So you guys, um, I'm going to spray this on now and uh, we're going to get to the notes. And also don't forget the white and yellow stripes. Oh my God. Okay, two sprays is already a lot uh, because this one is potent in the best of ways. But, oh my God, it is sublime, it is divine. And let me tell you, so it came out in 2015. So now it's 2021, so it's six years already. I wonder if this one has been reformulated as has everything else uh, in this world, but I might have an older batch, who knows? Let me see if we can, yeah, there is a batch number here. I haven't checked though in the, this being a niche brand, I'm not even sure if they really have, um, if this one is kind of, I know that Frederic Mal fragrances don't really have a, um, you can't really find according to their, 
batch codes the year of production on the most famous perfume date dating not to go dating but uh you know to, to figure out when a perfume was released or produced usually niche fragrance houses are not still in the databases of these websites so i didn't even try checking out this one but anyway if you can translate these batch codes into years i can tell you that this batch code is 6j1 this one is made in france um Okay, so 2015 is the year it was launched. And the perfumer behind this one is also a perfumer that is behind almost all of the fragrances from the quite hefty amount of perfumes that are offered. Or this guy is the perfumer behind most of the uh, Wilhelm uh, Parfumerie fragrances. And his name is um, Jérôme Epinette. Jérôme Epinette, who has also made a lot of perfumes for Zara. And you might think, hmm, but I don't know. <laughs> I mean, he, he has done some really commercial things, um, Mr. Epinette. But uh, he has also done some, I mean... I gotta say, some of the names of the Zara perfumes that he has done sound interesting. At least in their name constellation, which... Doesn't say much. I mean, you got to smell a perfume to know, right? But um, if I am to click on information, so what he did was H&M as well. He did end other stories, okay? Arabesque Wood, Bell Size Beat, Bonbon Tree, Botanic Whisper, Crinoline, Fig Fiction. Fig Fiction, that's a good name. Uh, Fleur de Mimosa, Havana Blues, Miami Muse, Moroccan Tea, Perle de Coco. Now, this one kind of piqued my interest because it's a white bottle and it's called Coco's Pearl. So, of course, I'm like, hmm, does this smell like a Chanel perfume? So, you best believe I'm going to try to hunt it down and try it out. Coco's Pearl from and other stories <laughs> you know punk bouquet not pink bouquet but he did the punk bouquet also for and other stories also an interesting name that i would like to smell then uh for anna sui he did romantica exotica in 2016 ariana grande he did thank you next in 2019 atelier cologne he did blanche immortel bois blanc camellia intrepide cedre atlas or atlas emerald agar Pacific Lime, Santa, I mean, Silver Iris, Sud Magnolia, Trefle Poor, like, the girl did a couple of perfumes. Banana Republic. You see what I mean? There's that topic and other stories, Banana Republic, Zara. For Banana Republic, he did Modern Woman. Uh, I thought he made a perfume for Bjork because there's a brand called Bjork and Berries, but the O without the two dots on top, so it's not Bjork, or is it? For Bjork and Berries, he did Dark Rain, Never Spring, Never Spring, sounds really interesting, and White Forest. Boy Smells, that's another brand. He did Rose Load, Suede Pony, Violet Ends. Yeah, he also worked for Bayredo. Baldafric, he did the Baldafric, he did the Bayredo without name. Eleventh Hour, La Tulipe, Slow Dance, Sun Dazed, and Velvet Haze. For Commodity, he did Velvet. He did a perfume uh, for Daniela Katzenberger, Eau de Toilette. Uh, Decennial, Bois Bourbon, Nuit Epicé, Santal Sacre. For Dolce Gabbana, he did Lemon and Orange. Alice Brooklyn, he did Fable, Myth, Raven, Rives, Rose, and Sci-Fi. I want to smell how Sci-Fi smells according to him. Because if I'm to go from what how this one smells, Fleur Burlesque, Sci-Fi is probably amazing. He worked for Floral Street, where he did Arizona Bloom, Black Lotus, Chypre Sublime, Iris Goddess, London Poppy, Neon Rose, Wild Vanilla Orchid, Wonderland Peony, Ilang Ilang Espresso. Did he combine Ylang Ylang with coffee? Hmm. He worked for Gant, Frappin, Graf, Guess. You see what I mean? Again, we have Guess. He did Guess, Seductive Noir Homme. He nod ID perfumes, uh, Jovi Paris, 
Kirin, New York City, he did Rose Inc. L'Occitan en Provence, he did Citrus Verbena Intense. Laurent Matsonet Parfums, he did Arsenic Osman Sensual Orchid. Le Bon Gerbois, he did a 1900 L'Heure du Proust. Oh, Les Sourds de Noé, he did Amazing Jade, Bohemian Absinthe, uh, Lulu Castagnette, Nest, Olfactive Studio, he did Flashback in New York, Oribe, Philly and Phil, Régime de Fleur, Chloe Sevigny, he did a perfume for Chloe Sevigny, Little Flower, Sol de Janeiro, Tiffany, he did Tiffany and Co, Rose Gold, for Wilhelm Parfumerie, which is what we're reviewing today. He did A Lie Like a Day, which is another good one. Black Citrus, Colette for Wilhelm. Colette, who hath closed their doors, alas. Dear Polly, Dirty Velvet, Do Not Disturb, Fleur Burlesque. Modest Mimosa, Morning Chess, Opus Core, Poets of Berlin, Purple Fig, Room Service, Smoke Show, Stockholm 1978, and The Oud Affair. For Zara, he did Cool Heights, Greenery, Vibrant Leather, Vibrant Leather Bogos, Vibrant Leather Cologne, Vibrant Leather Eau de Parfum, Vibrant Leather Eclat de Bergamot, Vibrant Leather Epicé, Vibrant Leather Intense, Vibrant Leather Oud, Vibrant Leather Parfum de Liberté, Vibrant Leather Warm, White Soho. He did Zara Home as well with Absolutely Sublime, Queer, or, uh, queer Velvet, Floral Mystery, Tonka Wood, and so on. I mean, the guy has been churning out perfumes like there's no tomorrow. So I do not know if all of them smell divine. This one, however, does. Opening notes, gardenia and jasmine. This is the top notes of this perfume. The top notes are already like everything. Uh, gardenia and jasmine in the best of ways. The gardenia can tend to go floral sometimes, not in this case. In this case, the gardenia is corpulent. It is fleshy. And the jasmine is not an indolic jasmine. There's no indoles in this one. The jasmine here is purely ethereal, oily, and very, very sunshiny. It's like rays of sunshine, while the gardenia gives it um, almost a, a, a pulpy, fleshy... Mm, like a like a honeyed touch. It doesn't smell of honey, but it's it's very very fleshy, uh, buttery. It's like a smooth buttery white surface that is slightly creamy, and it smells of sunshine. It smells of summer, and then the mid notes. In the mid notes, so what actually what Mr. Epinette did, he's elevating every layer. Every note, every ingredient that should be in a, in, a, in a lower note, in a subsequent note, he elevates them to the upper note. So, gardenia and jasmine, which we're used to seeing in the mid notes, he puts them in the top notes. And usually a perfume like this would have some sort of citrus in it as well to kind of zest up that gardenia. No. The citrusy notes should be in the top. There are none. No citruses. They're all out. So whatever was in the top note is gone whatever was in the bass note, or whatever was in the mid note is in the top note. So the mid note gardenia and jasmine are in the top notes. And then in the mid note, we have sandalwood. And the sandalwood should have been in the bass notes, but now the sandalwood is in the mid note. So it creates this woodsy, warm, even warmer still feeling. Already the jasmine and the gardenia gave us sunshine, but then the sandalwood in the mid notes, oh, it's just drenched in those beautiful white flowers and um, it, it creates an even more majestic, honeysuckled, warm ray of light, almost like a creamy, balsamic happiness, if you may. And then, base notes, amber. But something that has been mentioned in several uh, vid uh, not videos, in several texts uh, writing about this perfume is something called the black amber, which apparently is something that uh, Wilhelm Parfumerie utilizes in all their fragrances. So I'm not so sure about this one. However, uh, when it comes to the amber here, um, it's not the type of amber that we're used to smelling from, let's say, the amber heavy obsession by Calvin Klein. Uh, this amber is, um, it's a niche amber. You smell that this amber has a quality to it that is not a mainstream amber. It, um, 
it adds yet another layer of warmth to this fragrance, which is already kissed by the best of, the, of, of rays of sunshine. And we're talking not the type of sunshine of today. We're talking old school sunshine, like from the 70s movies and early 80s movies that the film grain that was utilized in movies back in the day, um, also in Technicolor, even before then, when Technicolor was utilized, there's a certain type of way that film captured light back then on celluloid. Uh, it delivered a certain warmth of light that digital media does not deliver nowadays. Digital films nowadays do not deliver that level of warmth that celluloid delivered. So what does this mean? This means that... Uh, when you smell this perfume, you smell a depth of sun and summer and beach vibes and, and suntan lotion. But suntan lotion can smell really cheap. This doesn't smell of suntan lotion. It smells of the idea of sizzling under the sun while you're protected by a good suntan lotion that does not leave white stains all over you, mind you, the good ones. But it delivers that whole vibe and mood within celluloid and technicolor. Not a digital type of light, but it's an analog light. And to me, to smell a perfume that is reminiscent of light in analog movies, oh, that's rare. That's rare. And that's something to treasure when something like that happens. Now, I've been hinting at the yellow, white and uh, white, um, the white and yellow, the stripes, and the, the whole idea of the late 70s, early 80s. And of course, some of you might have guessed it by now. This fragrance is, to me, the modern day version of Giorgio Beverly Hills. And I have reviewed Giorgio Beverly Hills on my channel, so check out this review. This is one of the loves of my life, my mom's favorite perfume from the 80s. Of course, this is one of the newer batches. This one is actually made in the US, so this is a couple of years old, but the newest batches are made in Spain. Those are not so good. Um, however, made in, in, the, in the USA, made in the UK, uh, made in France, um, are the best versions of Giorgio Beverly Hills throughout the decades. Made in the Netherlands is a weird version. And then there's the made in Spain. But if we were to, if Giorgio Beverly Hills never existed, and of course, the symbol of Giorgio Beverly Hills, you can see it's the same color, it's that yellow, and the box has the stripes, the white and yellow stripes. Now, this is, the packaging for Fleur Burlesque is not just the packaging for Fleur Burlesque. All of the perfumes of Wilhelm Parfumerie have the same color, utilize the yellow and the white in the same intensity, just the name of the perfume changes here according to which perfume you're buying, but their packaging is always yellow and white. So it's not a coincidence that just Fleur Burlesque happens to have the white and yellow colors of Giorgio, so you might think they're similar. No, all of the perfumes from this niche house have this packaging, but coincidentally, their perfume that I love the most uh, actually smells of a modern day version of Giorgio in the best of ways. It's not a dupe. I wouldn't call it a dupe. I wouldn't call it a flanker. It's a perfume in its own right. But it, it, it feels like, ah, oh, I miss, I would, Giorgio is a cheapie nowadays. It was expensive in the early 80s when it was first launched. However, uh, it's still beautiful and majestic today, but they've stripped it down of a lot of things, hence making it a, the cheapie that it is today. Um, so I would like to envision that if Fleur Burlesque were, if Giorgio never existed and were to be released today, it would have been released as Flo Burlesque because this is the modern day version of Giorgio to me. It is just that beautiful and divine. And it carries, it carries and carries. It projects and projects. It's like butter. Um, and it is even better if you, I spread it on my skin because I want to, you know, test it on a review for you guys. But when I wear it out and about or in the privacy of my own home for my own pleasure, I spray it on my chest, a little bit on my clothes. So I spray it and then I kind of just let my shirt touch it. Why? Because this one on skin, of course, with time it fades, but on clothes, it's like it never fades. It stays that fresh top gardenia jasmine note on garments stays for days. And it's so beautiful. It stays fresh in the top notes. It doesn't go into the amber and sandalwood. It stays on clothes in the gardenia and jasmine the whole time. 
but fleshy and buttery, velvety as well. My mouth is watering as I'm talking. I don't know what to say, you guys. And I have received this as a gift for my birthday, and I could not be happier. Um, it makes me so happy. And it's the same effect that I have whenever I smell Giorgio. I'm always happy when I smell Giorgio. Always. It's just, it's happiness in a bottle. Giorgio is a happy perfume. This one is kind of the more noble version of it because this one uses really good ingredients. It's not a cheapy. Um, you smell out that they have researched their ingredients. Could it have been even more precious? Yeah, for sure. For sure, they could have gotten even more expensive raw materials. But for what it is, the ingredients in here are top notch, at least for the batch that I have, which number of batch code I've stated to you at the beginning of this video. Um, thumb up this video if you're liking it thus far, by the way. Thumb it up and let the algorithm know we're doing something good here. Uh, Fleur Burlesque, of course, also has a very particular name. The Burlesque Flower. I think it's a very interesting name for a perfume like this because uh, I get sunshine. I don't get darkness. I don't get this burlesque vibe. I don't get this Dida Fontis flirtatious. Could be a little bit dominatrixy as well if you want. No. Um, let me read to you what the what this uh, house has to say about their own fragrance. when they're talking about Fleur Burlesque. Okay, so uh, Wilhelm Parfumerie states um, about Fleur Burlesque, unflinching, exquisite femininity inspired by La Belle Epoque, a woman alive in the spotlight at the Moulin Rouge, enchantingly aglow in the soft candlelight of Maxime's. Fleur Burlesque's botanic notes of jasmine and gardenia bloom unadorned, while decadent undertones of amber and sandalwood smolder below. Nimble, sultry, and playful, this fragrance captures the sensory indulgence of the fin de siècle. I don't get Moulin Rouge. Moulin Rouge is dirty for me in many ways because, you know, of all the dances, the sweating, the changing costumes, the tits flying around and all that stuff, people drinking, smoking. Back then, you were allowed to smoke everywhere. It was a very smoky, damp atmosphere, highly sexualized, mind you. But this is more of a tease. This is um, definitely 80s. This has those shoulder pads for days. It's that big. But it's, it's majestically clean. It's flirtatious, but it stands severe and um, knowing exactly what it is and what it wants. But it's never aggressive. And this is the beauty of this perfume. It has a hell of a lot of character. A hell of a lot of character. But it never slaps in your face. It's not one of those perfumes that, you know, as they say, you smell the perfume before the person arrives. The perfume arrives before the person arrives, meaning the perfume slaps you silly is aggressive. This one caresses you. Yes, it enters before you enter. Yes, it does. But it's not aggressive. It has that noble, that noble attitude, that noble demeanor. Um, it's grand, but it's never vulgar. And it's just borderline, you know? And the person wearing this, and you're gonna ask, oh, is it for women, for men? It's unisex. I know that they describe it as a female thing, but you know, perfumes for me, I always say perfumes, no, no gender. Wear it if you like the way it smells on you, that's what it is. Everything else is just marketing ploys. But, um, so you could put on nail polish, it could be a flashy red nail polish or even neon pink, but you could still make it classy. It's as if this one, no matter what you have on, wearing this on top makes it, it just rains it all in and makes it just this, oh, it packages everything so perfectly, so lusciously. It's very inviting, very, very inviting, very open-hearted, a very warm, enticing, alluring. It, it invites you in. It wants you to stay next to the person that's wearing it. It's that friendly a perfume. And I mean, How many perfumes do we know that are so strong, 
but that are not aggressive these days. This is one of them. This one is so powerful and strong, but never aggressive. So the vibes it gives me is definitely, definitely uh, this gorgeous person. Age doesn't matter. Could be younger, older, but they know how to dress and they maybe overdress a little bit. But they have so much character and such a fun character that the way that they dress just makes you want to look at them. The, you know those type of people that you just keep looking at them because they're so fascinating to you. They're a little bit over the top, but they're super friendly. They're not arrogant. They're not like, like a person that would wear from head to toe Rick Owens. Nothing against people who wear Rick Owens from head to toe. But you know, if you wear Rick Owens from head to toe, people are not going to approach you. You're going to look very, very unapproachable. Um, Rick Owens is the type of clothing that repels people in the best of ways because it wants to obviously it's it's a it's a it's an aesthetic this is the opposite i wonder if if you wear from head to toe rick owens and then you spray on fleur burlesque would that break that pattern of non-approachability i don't know I'm not so sure it's that powerful because rick owens clothes can be very intimidating uh, if a person is wearing them from head to toe but so imagine that person that is a little bit over the top of what they're wearing, but they're so charming and sweet and kind and polite and um, they're not aggressive at all. And you just want to hang around them. You want to be around them because they, they exude that positive energy, almost motherly in a way, almost like a mother that is a little bit over the top uh, in the styling, but she just has such a big heart that you, you just want to be with that person all the time. That's Fleur Burlesque. Very simple. Now, I know I might be a bit biased when it comes to the motherly element of this because my mom's favorite perfume is Giorgio. So whenever I smell Giorgio, I think of my mom. But this is like thinking of my mom even more enhanced because this one is more pure and sophisticated in smell than this one. It's ambrosial. It has that ambrosial quality, uh, which, let me see if I have it here. I do, which we also have in uh, Quelque Fleur. And Quelque Fleur, even though it smells very different, it's also a white floral. But Quelque Fleur from Ubigan, also check out the review on my channel. Quelque Fleur is very ambrosial. Ah, oh, to die for. Um, it's a very different perfume uh, to Fleur Burlesque, but both of them in their own way are very ambrosial, okay? Quelque Fleur is ambrosia for days. This thing is just pure nectar of the gods. It's, it's just that elevated and, and pure and ethereal. This one is a little bit more down to earth because the rays of sun that we feel in this one, they, they, they come to earth. They hit the surface of the planet. And that's where this magic happens. This magic happens there where the warm rays of light hit the surface of the planet. Quelque Fleur is, doesn't touch the ground. This one is elevated. This one is so elevated. This one is ambrosia that is really for the gods. It's up there in the sky, this one. But this is the ambrosia that hits the floor. Uh, and that's the difference between the two, but they're both very ambrosial. And it comes to a point in its evolution where it does hit that niche tone and there you might say you don't like it or you like it i mean i'm not a big fan of niche perfumes so there is a moment here where the amber and the sandalwood do pop out and say hey by the way we are a niche sandalwood and a niche amber so bow down bow down to the gods you know and that's a moment when i say uh-uh so It's kind of balancing itself out, but that gardenia and jasmine, they keep it real. They don't allow that sandalwood and that niche type of black amber to take over the whole game and become just this niche concoction. So it's, it, it's you're torn. You're constantly torn between something that you recognize, a smell that you feel you know, and also something new, something brand new that a type of niche fragrance can deliver. So you're balancing out between these two worlds the whole time. And that juggling is what creates a tension for me. And that tension 
also keeps me coming back for more for this perfume on top of the fact that i just love the way it smells and it reminds me of these beautiful things like sunshine the rays of light analog movies technicolor cinemascope landscapes oh, it's just so inviting and alluring and i wholeheartedly recommend it and even if you don't maybe like how it develops on your skin try it on your clothes just one spritz and see how those flowers are going to bloom and just keep blooming and blooming. And you're going to feel like you're in heaven. It's just sunshine all around you. Well, that's my review of, uh, Kel of no, Kel -Kel uh, that's my review of Fleur Burlesque. Let me get to the chats. Um, Mr. Phillips says, let's break the record 300 plus. Oh yeah, thumb up the video if you're liking it thus far. Leslie says, the perfume diet, I swear, putting on some really good perfume helps me control my appetite. Am I crazy? Leslie, that's a really good point. Perfume does help you control your appetite, but you got to use the right perfume because some perfumes open up your appetite and make you want to eat, while other perfumes can actually close your appetite. This one opens your appetite. This one makes you want to eat fruits healthy stuff vegetables seafood that you just hunted yourself out of the ocean because you're there and uh oh man this is so good this one doesn't make me crave sweets it makes me crave savory stuff and fruits but there are some perfumes when i spray them on i just don't want to eat anything mr philip fabulous is a burlesque is a literally uh, is a literary dramatic or musical work intended to cause laughter by caricaturing the manner or spirit of serious works or by ludicrous treatment of their subjects. I wouldn't say that this one, uh, I wouldn't say that this perfume falls in, in that description at all. I think when, I think, well, we don't know, we would have to ask the makers of the perfume why they chose this name. But I think they chose this name not for that definition of burlesque. I think they chose the name more for the Dida Fontis aspect of, of burlesque, which is kind of a relatively modern take on burlesque. Uh, this kind of um, pin-up beauty and delicate tease. Uh, in fact, Dida Fontis is... Uh, she created that new way of burlesque, but burlesque, truth be told, is way more aggressive uh, in its original form and uh, um, also way more physically interactive with the audience than just the pinup on stage performing and then leaving. Jack says, I can't wait to get this. going to be a wild ride. Oh, Jack, and you guys, be sure to get it in summer because in summer, this one blooms like... It's nobody's business. I'm sure in winter it's amazing too, but it's in the heat where this one is just so majestic. It just makes you melt in your own self, you know? It makes you feel your oats. Like, let's keep it real. This one makes you feel your oats. Yes, yes, yes. Perfumes are aggressive these days, says uh, Su Hung Huang. Yeah, they, can, they tend to be quite aggressive these days, even the niche ones. Uh, Orsi says, I'm going to definitely check this perfume tomorrow. Orsi, check it out and let us know if you liked it. Um, on skin and on clothes, the bottle is so lovely. All of the perfumes from this range and the 100 ml are made by Pierre Dinan. Uh, it is beautiful. I mean, it's, it's so, it's, it's very, you know, the girth, the girth of it all, but it's flat. And I love the fact that it has this huge, beautifully cardboard made stand. And, um, on, that. and then it kind of falls into its little position. And, and I love that they gave so much room between the bottle. You know, this is luxury. This is how perfume should be presented. You know what I mean? And also the inside is all fluffy and furry, this white bit. It's not just, it's not just cardboard, it's velvet. So when you lift this up, you know, it's hefty. It's like, ah, the upper lens. We own everything, <laughs> you know what I mean? Mr. Philip Abel says, I want a perfume that portrays the flying tits of Moulin Rouge, just saying. Then go for uh, Jean-Paul Gaultier's classique Eau de Parfum. I would say that's very much that. Moulin Rouge with the flying boobies. Maximo CG says, and another perfume added to my wish list. Don't blind purchase this one, you guys. Try it out first. But it is, it's definitely, 
it tells a story and that's at the end of the day we want perfumes to make us dream to take us places to just you know when you know you know when you wear a perfume for yourself when it makes you feel certain ways you know you got the you, you know you have the right perfume and yes mr philip tits tits flying tits tits everywhere rich mitch okay so we got our boys in the chats very excited for the boobies <laughs> mr philip says it seems like this case uh, burlesque refers to the comedic sense of the word it seems it's gay and joyful and fun exactly that's exactly what it is may says omg that's amazing most gardenia scents fade quickly so i'm definitely buying this but may this is not like the Chanel Gardenia. It's not aquatic. It's not green at all. This is a jasmine with Gardenia. It is ambrosial. It is warm. I mean, I'm telling you. Oh, get goosebumps. It's 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 just it's just that good. It's nothing else to say except I'm loving it. Become a member and a patron today and have your name listed in the end credits at the end of every video. One of the many perks of being a member and uh, and a patron. And thank you to all my co-chatters who, ha who have co-reviewed the perfume together with me, you guys. Thank you so much. Um, if you do get to try this perfume or if you have it already, let me know in the comment section down below if you are liking it and how you're liking it and how you're living with it. And until next time, until our next perfume review, never forget to never give up on love. Love you all. See you soon. Take care. Bye. Mwah.